Ooh, excuse me. Hello. You can hear me clicking around. I'm just sorting things out that I forget to do. It's before I went live. Uh, like running stream labels. So we can see our recent follower, GG Cryo, if it does its thing once it wakes up. Sorry, forgotten guy, you will be forgotten. Uh, how are we doing? There we go. Oh, I am so tired. It's, it's unbelievable. I, I'm not going to say whether if I'm going to be, well, nothing but health, good health, I've got good health in these cold days. It's a little cold. Uh, so, no power, doubt people will come along and start asking me what we're doing and what not. And it's probably going to drive me mad. But introduction wise, people who are watching this on YouTube, catch up, whatever. Watching the recording. Uh, so, first of all, I am Santonio Muppig, also known as Dan. Uh, I've been a software developer for several years previously, I've become a secondary school teacher teaching computer science, ITT, whatever. Currently gone out of there and now trying to get in software development land and to entertain myself. I enjoy programming now and then and I did some coding in Unity over the last several years to improve my skills on uh, Unity, C Sharp and so I know how to program in Unity. Uh, I'm familiar with it, I'm no expert. But I always have ideas to do things. I was working on a 3D game, but I've got to a point where I left it just because I weren't happy with some points of it. And I probably will return back to it because it's something I've done over seven years. I will probably carry on working on it for another seven years. However, uh, I quite fancy doing something sort of tutorial wise and live streaming it to inform you the viewers and I'm going to create something brand new as to not to confuse people like opening up code that I've worked on for seven years which is many lines of code and this will be allowed for people to pick up and follow and create something similar perhaps you shall see, it's all new, it's going to be a learning experience for me and viewers and we'll just pick up things as we go along, enough of an introduction. Uh, come on, OBS, scene switching now, fine. There we go, yay, GG Cryo, latest follower. Okay. So, if you want to learn about installing Unity and everything, this is not the video for you even learning the interface this is not the video for you uh, no I may explain things as we go along uh, so you're gonna create a new project and oh, we got my project folders I'm gonna call this wingcom 2d because I'm used to the option uh, we could use the 3d option and take it but uh, 2D options just going to set the scene up for 2D, I believe. Previously, I did something in 2D with Unity, and I find it not so great in some areas, like screen scaling. But that was a year or two back now, <laughs> so maybe they fix things. So yeah, we shall see. Okay, here's Unity. Here's our 2D scene. Uh, things I'm gonna do. Yeah, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna cheat, and it's gonna it's gonna annoy people straight off the bat. <laughs> or not? All right. So components no scene oh dear 
Yeah, literally, I've not done anything in Unity for a while, so forget everything anyway. I want the store, I want to download a package I bought previously. <laughs> I can't even remember how to do it. Usually it's like, it's there, I sit still. So download assets. So a bunch of assets used previously. And I'm gonna use rewired. We need to update rewired. What is rewired? Rewired allows you to do anything with input. Keyboard input, mouse input, peripheral input, such as joysticks and joypads. Why have I used that? Well, I have a uh, two Cytic joysticks. Both have lag in Unity. Lag comes from Unity. Because they work everywhere else apart from a Unity game. Using Rewired bypasses the entire Unity input system. It uses its own custom one. Well, we already downloaded it, we'll import it. Eliminates the lag for anyone using a Cytic joystick. So this is just your basic import package. And we can see there's lots of stuff in here, uh, stuff that won't make sense. If you're generally importing stuff, you just want to import it. Oh, there'll be tutorial stuff in there and helpful stuff and licensed stuff, but we don't care. You're just going to go and import it in. When it comes to building the final code of our program and exporting it, Unity is clever in exporting whatever you use and abandoning the rest. So even if your project size is really big, your final executable shared, published, could be much less. Could be much less, possibly. Depends. And this is going to take ages. So while we're doing that, we're going to want a sprite. And I believe I've already got sprites. But for the sake of people, Wing Commander Sprites. So you look, sprites, 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 sprites. Years ago, I downloaded sprites. Now, uh, wcnews.com has lots of lovely sprites, but people also do sprites, but we'll stick to the original and probably better off through the website. It's uh, a sprite for Sorais. There we go. Also, someone's already like. Exported it. And I think we can literally go and find various sprites in ships through this database. And yeah, ships. CIS ships. That the Confederation ships, serious fighters. Doesn't look like it. Like privateer. Like Kilrafi fighter types, it says Kilrafi light fighters. It helps if you know what you're doing. Come on, give me the 2D. Rubbish. <laughs> Could do things more complicated, but you know. I find it through some good old postings. I don't remember downloading stuff previously. Question is, where did I put them? Uh, 
What do we mean save our project? This is already turning into a disaster, completely, completely, completely uh, unprepared in any sense of form. Proceed, install, yeah, you come on, rewired. So I'm not going to get worked up on the fact that I can't find everything as quick for you. Uh, because in the end, I'll just end up coming across worse for wear. To support our platforms, must add entries. So please add those settings. And would you like to install Control Mapper? It's customized, well, Unity UI based Control Remaster. Yes. So literally, it's like allows the users, the players, to do what they do. Touch controls, maybe. Maybe we'll create an Android build. No, we can skip docs because documentation is something else. So on my Barracuda drive. It's been a while, I can't even remember where my projects uh kept so perhaps assets whoops and we've got oh actually got 3d models in there mm. but not what we're after no pictures and video games no no stuff no, oh, we are in uh, the wrong folder for that. Uh, if you're in secondary school and you don't organize your folders, well, I have sort of organized your folders. Make sure you organize them better than me. I have pictures saved here, there, and everywhere. Probably best to save all your pictures in a particular folder. Even if for, for all your project stuff. Just so you know it's all under one thing and then create the appropriate folders for that. So where would you be? Not there. Could be in my Dropbox. No, okay. Uh, again, not off course. We know it is in here somewhere, so we'll just have to look for it. And maybe no ships, Confederation ships. Hmm. Confederation fighter types, light fighters. We've got our hornets. So here we've got a picture of our hornets there, and there we go. That's a picture I was looking for. So this is like 356 by 324 pixels image. <laughs> Not what I really expect. And what did we say? So let's go to our pictures. Wing Commander. And we'll just save that in there. We'll organize things later. Probably want to edit it because we're not using it as is. It's not any decent image manipulation program will do for this, like GIMP and whatever else there is out there. 
and we're just going to edit this picture, literally crop it and just use a part of the image. Uh, so we could do like image crop to selection and then we just want it perfectly within type of selection so our tolerance is way too high we only want to select potentially the black and then we're going to invert the selection and then we're going to crop and make sure you just crop to the image Whoa, what happened there? Image crop to selection. Whatever. Uh, for some reason, we've got a blue background. Huh. Talking about uh, any decent image manipulation program, flipping heck. I don't know why it's doing that for me now. It's just serving to embarrass me, so we'll just invert selection. Image inverts. Oh, I've lost it. Invert. I'm going to cut that image and stick it in that transparent layer. Oh, there we go. Paste it as a new image. So that was our thing. And then we could delete these little black bits. Hung up. They actually represent part of the transparency. Who knows? Anyway, I think we've got the top part of our fighter, and we'll just go save as Wing Commander Hornet. Let's see what I mean about saving things with decent names. Oh, there's my pasta. Uh, I don't think he appreciated that when I posted it for his birthday. But hey, so pictures, pictures, pictures. Wing Commander. I'll call it Hornet Views. Because then we're going to export that. Whoops. And a good format to export and also keep the transparency ping, PNG. You could also do TIFF. That's what, 76.5. But look at that. Like PNG is just so much smaller, and like JPEG is like 5. But no transparency, and GIF is just low quality. So PNG is a good format to go when we're going to be exporting images in it. Just leave whatever else is at default and I'm just going to save that. There we go. So in our Unity project, first of all, oh, we'll look at our scene view. We want to go add Rewired, rewired event system. No, no I'm not using it in that long. We're better off not even using flipping rewired system. Uh, fine, we won't use rewired. <laughs> Just because I've forgotten how to use it. 
Right. So I've got our assets folder. Assets. Anything we're going to create for our project is going to go in this folder. Let's just create ourselves a new folder and call this our sprite. And within our sprites folder, we may as well have conferred uh, ships. Can't, why is it conferred? Because the Hornet is a conferred ship. And then we're going to import a new asset and literally our sprite is going to be a new asset so an existing asset and we just go to our pictures and go to the correct folder and get our hornet in there uh, we might need to rotate our hornets i don't know which our scaling is, is at the moment swing goes our hornet now few things we need to do what is it 2d and user interface well they have changed things around okay so it is 2d and it could also be a user interface but it's not sprite mode we've got hmm, options so maybe if we had pre-rotated or animated sprites we could do that pixels per unit how many pixels in the sprite corresponds to one unit in the world so it is 122 you can play around with that so that is literally saying how big is it should be in the world you know uh, or should we say how many so basically one unit in unity is the equivalent to one meter in length so we're saying 100 pixels is one meter if we looked at our reference guide for wing commander the length of a hornet is 20 meters now length in, of the game is just there for war it doesn't really represent actual uh, actual scaling uh, but it will give us a rough guide so so that is 20 meters. So it's 148 divided by 20. So we're saying Forty eight divided by twenty. So seven point four pixels is a meter. So if we say seven point round it up eight. Eight pixels per unit, yes. Then we have to reselect it. Mesh type we've got type of mesh to generate type I guess mesh goes all the way around it or a full rectangle all the way around it ah well video games come a long way and computers are powerful we'll go with tight how much MT over here to leave around the sprite in the generate mesh I'll leave that as default pivot is the center or any corners we could it's sprite editor and now we've got some sort of edit program which I've never used 
nor have any idea how to use their sprite editor. <laughs> Don't expect me to cover that. We've got wrap mode, which is advanced stuff, so we can clamp repeat. I think we just need to clamp it. And whoa, forget that. Maximum size. I mean, all these will probably mean something, but I don't need to apply anything. It's already applied. What happens if we drag it in the world? Whoa, big old sprite. So let's just center that to zero, and then we say move one pixel. And then we can actually see that our sprite twenty, yeah, so it literally moves. Where are we? We've effectively gone eight, so. <laughs> <laughs> so really this needs to face the other way and potential ways to possibly do that is go on there with its sprite renderer flip flip x so now let me do that you know that's one way to do it Just flip it very basic GT GT stuff. I can say rotate ooh, on the wrong angle. So that is like, yeah. Rotating pitching, is it? And then on uh, doing that. <laughs> so we want to rotate on Z. And there you go. See, we can like rotate on that angle and when we move position right we're going up like that way <laughs> okay that makes sense of course not clear as mud so we have our hornet we've imported it into unity and we've flipped it uh, let's just save our scene. So when Unity starts, you start with a basic scene. This is our scene, and in fact, we're going to create ourselves another folder just to save our scenes in it. If you ever do create projects and whatnot in Unity, it's always good. Why don't I just take that? It's always good to get your full structure set up. Nice and neat, everything in it from the start. So save you organizing things later on. And you'll learn how to improve your folder structure as you go along. Save as. And we're just going to call this scene. Because it's literally just a scene at the minute. We could have a scene for our main menus. We could have a scene for every single level we might create. And scenes for high score entries and various things. Think of scenes like different wills you might have uh, for different, whatever, different elements, potentially game worlds, menu screens. You can use them how you want. Quite diverse, and you can even merge scenes as well together. So you could have your main menu displayed over your game world, player world, just by merging two scenes together. Hmm. All right. So we've got our scene in our world. We've got our hornet. And then we would want to have our ship fly around and move. So a new folder. Scripts. So Unity uses scripting language. 
and we'll just put it in here for now and I'll just call it ship I'm not even going to call it player ship it's just a ship a generic ship class and scripts can run on game objects and they run on game objects by dragging and dropping the scripts onto the game object and when we look into ship Visual Studio is my default editor you might have mono dev whatever is convenient so basically the breakdown in this is first of all we've got start start is for initialization so like setting all the attributes of your ship and preparing it to run in the game world so set your shield strength set your armor strength set your energy set your speed set your speed your rotation speed and that stuff update is where everything runs so when the player like pushes a button, starts firing weapons, when holds down an arrow key, rotates. And that is basically that. So what do we want? Oh, so. We'll have float. So float for rotation speed and uh, max speed. Okay. I'll set them as private. Uh, if we set values as private, then that means we cannot see them here in the editor. Maybe you want to edit things in the editor, so then we might just say public. And then when we come and have a look, then once the little cogwheel is finished doing its business, we can actually set the attributes here because now they are public and available to the editor but also available everywhere else so literally anything can edit them there is a way like is it to say uh, What is this thing called anyway? The inspector. So it's inspector. So we could hide in the inspector. Yeah, okay. We'll leave it public. It's not how I would do it generally uh, that is what we go and do we need to initialize them no but we'll have a public speed uh, private speed and that's our current speed and our speed Is going to start off at zero, and that's something that will never initialize. Now, in Unity, you should have something for changing the inputs. And Great if we could even remember 
what it's called. So we've got services, scene, game, inspector, hierarchy, animation, mixer, animation, sprite package, tile, writing, navigation, physics. Oh yeah, this is where we would do rewired. So I forget even how to add Input. You want to use the Unity input in various ways. To do that, Input Manager. And did we see Input Manager? No. Is it over here? No. Wow, it's been so long. Mm -hmm. ah. User class read setup access in input manager. It's all right saying get input button down file one. We need to declare what file one is conventional game input. So adding new input access edit project settings input. So project settings input. Got all our axes, and we'll have all the axes that rewired stuck in. Because we remember when it popped up and said, Do you want to add settings? Well, it just went and added all the settings. However, we've got horizontal and vertical axes, and fire one, fire two, fire three. So just to get started, we'll, I'll just show you basic input. And then in the next one, I'll probably use rewired. So we've got left and right. So I'll we'll call that rotation. Throttle. Okay. A bit more obvious because it's saying down and up, down and up buttons on the keyboard, left and right keyboard buttons, and those were the basic ones literally them, and all the way up to probably scroll wheel was basic, maybe, and then we've probably got. Well then, there is some duplicate stuff in there. Might be something rewired really uses, no doubt. No doubt. Just control S. Always control S frequently. Save your stuff. So back to here. Now, if we have a look back at the conventional on here so literally it's like input dot get access and it will return a value and literally an axis has a value between minus one and one neutral position is zero So let's do our rotation. Uh, and we could uh, literally say our flute rotation. So the rotation we're going to get equals input and the get axes. And we've got a bunch of things. So, so get axes and say this axis that we want to get was rotate. Well, they going to call it rotation. 
what did I call you? Rotation. So we called it rotation. And then we got float speed. I'll have our acceleration input. Let's get axes acceleration. Now we want to literally if rots are not equal to zero. So we've got some sort of rotation then rotation speed. Uh, is it times it by? Mm. Yeah, relation is just speed times by rot. Ah, uh, literally times by oh. Literally, because you've got multiple. Right, processors have different processing speeds. Long time ago, back in DOS, you know, like your, your granddaddy's and your dad's video games, you just need to run in DOS box. Uh, they, once upon a time, they didn't care uh, about timings, so to speak, in processors because processors were pretty slow, and one processor to another one. Timing didn't matter that much because it ran in megahertz, like double digits, rather than gigahertz, like many more digits. But we want to be able to ensure that our rotation speed remains a consistent velocity of rotation. If we didn't do this, it would like spin crazy on different processing processes out there because we're running at different speeds. And there is something for that. And one of these will tell us a good way of doing that. Yeah, time dot delta time is what we need to multiply that by. And time dot delta time is like the computer's own timing so it actually knows literally how many seconds have passed and we also then need to let's have a look at our sprite add something called a rigid body so we've got physics, 2Ds, and a rigid body. And a rigid body is something that allows it to interact with physics. What do we have? Dynamic, kinematic, and static. I forget what they are. It's certainly not static. But we'll keep it dynamic for now. Uh, we can keep it simulated. Use auto mass. Yeah. No. All right, you got mass of an object. So mass is not the size of an object, not the weight of an object. It's just how much mass is in an object. How much is made up of it, I think. So, literally, to keep life so simple, we'll keep it sort of semi resembling then. We'll just give up a mass of 10. Now, we don't want to have any linear drag. Linear drag, linear, linear, moving in a straight line. Angular drag, no, we don't want any of that. So, no drag at all, we'll handle in that. Um, there's other things like collision detection, but we don't need to worry about that because there's nothing to collide with. 
Now then, a rigid body. Uh, rigid body 2D. Well, let's just get our rigid body. And then we also need to literally say, So you got starts, you got to wake. Well, we'll just put this in start for now. Rigid body 2D equals get a component. So we're going to say get the rigid 2D body component from this object. And as you can see, literally, so this is our object, and we're saying grab all the rigid body to D. And then we can play around with that rigid body to D dot rotation. Dots. Rotation, rotate around. We could do remove rotation. So we're going to use move rotation. All these lovely alerts. I'm going on on my phone. So it's complaining because it now needs to be inside there. So rotate the rigid body to an angle given in degrees. So all it just says rotate to 90 degrees, I guess. Rotate to that degrees to an angle. So then we want to say add in a rigid body 2D dot angle. Rotation, yeah. The rotation is then a plus this. Okay, and remember rotation brings positive or negative. Let's just go and run. And gravity takes its toll. Uh, gravity scale zero. So in rigid body, just set the gravity scale. And uh, now input access acceleration is not set up, it says when we try to do that. Change input settings, edit project settings input. So rotation. Input output acceleration. So we've got a gravity type access. So we've got key on mouse. So what is user complaining about? Good thing is many other people have done it before us. The error means you are using an access not set up in the input manager. Usually this happens when you try to read a non-existent access or an access with a spell misspelled name. So rotation. Doesn't seem to be a problem there. Let's just comment that out just in case we spelt acceleration wrong. And it shouldn't have avoided us. Whoops. Try to run the code. <laughs> pointless. Pointless running the code within here. Always within edit unity. Woo! Absolutely nothing's happening. 
So let's do some debugging. So, first of all, let's find out if we're even hitting here. So, click on this little grey area, add a breakpoint. Tell it to attach to Unity. If you're running Unity, stop it before you try and attach into Unity. I don't know if they fixed it, but previously it caused lots of problems. It's doing all its compiling and linking and whatnot. But we'll come back, we run it. Of course, we're not set ship rotation. So it does hit, and I just realized rotation speed is zero, therefore, it ain't gonna do anything. But literally, that's a breakpoint. It breakpoint stops the execution of code when it reaches that point. And given that that point was inside an if statement, it only triggered when we said press the key. So not much point continuing that, we'll stop that, we have to stop this and then define our rotation here, 5, run it again, and yes, and we'll see if it rotates, we let go and it sort of then continues a little bit. And that would more than likely be because of gravity. We'll set that to zero. We'll run it. We're rotating. And it was gravity, but not the gravity we suspected it to be. So, did we get any tooltip on gravity? Speed is set that the output falls towards neutral when at rest. I think we said a rotation of five, so we set it to five. Then, it's a little faster. Uh, we could turn around and say, is it access? Access type. I want to say it's like this is a button and then an axis, really. Yeah, we could put code in there, but oh, it's not going to get in the way of our perfection just yet. But it rotates slow. Uh, well, what do the docs say? How fast should you rotate? 8 DPS degrees a second. That is a low rotation. Super slow. 8 degrees a second for a spaceship to rotate. It just doesn't make sense. See, I know that a Hornet in the video game rotates faster than that. So maybe like 80 degrees a second and then watch it spin. Woo! See, on it was like spin that much. Pew 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 Yeah, well I'm having fun already. Uh, our camera, what can we do about our camera because it's literally so close to everything. Ooh, we've got all of the graphic size. So, like, size would be what? 
Yeah. So maybe the Hornet being that size would be a good alpha graphic size. And that'd be our game area. Or we could say, well, it should be even like 100. It's like, yeah. <laughs> And we run that, and then our camera size inside the game wheel will represent exactly like that. And then, yeah, we can rotate. So literally, these are just little windows, and then you can even, well, if the keys weren't set to that. Yeah, okay, show me up. Show my limited Unity knowledge. So we can now rotate the scale in there, and then we'll just stop that, and we'll just switch to scene and do it that way instead. Look. Watch, ping. Okay, so scene is your scene world. You can actually edit everything in your scene world if you wanted to. We'll say like you you now rotate ninety. Switch back to game. Oh, look, it's applied there. Switch back, rotate. Notice values updated. Okay. Ooh, now are you ready for the fun part? Let's make our spaceship fly like a spaceship. And we'll just in line. Nice neat. Nice lines of code. So now our rigid body. Notice how that's deprecated. We need to get rid of that. It's been deprecated for years. Uh, dot translate dot move. Move position. And what do you require? A vector two. So we could literally a vector two is like your x and your y coordinates. An acceleration is basically saying move by X amount, move by Y amount. So if you say I want to move 90 degrees at 120 units a second, then your vector would be literally, so you'd have zero for your X and then 120 for Y. When you then start getting angles in there, it needs to be slightly different. And that's when you use sin and cos for your angles and your tangents. Uh, but we're keeping it really simple. Uh, position, translate, transform. And so, rigid body, move. Position. We'll go with what we want. So we're looking at rigid body 2D. Move position. Moves the rigid body to a position. So have a read at that documentation. You can always pause this when you're not using live. And here we go. So we literally pass it in our position plus our velocity times by fixed delta time. All right, so nice and simple, rigid body 2D. Dots on position and then plus our speed times time dot delta time and that's only if Excel is greater than zero because it could be a negative value and literally let's do that but however our speed as we mentioned is a vector Uh, we want sin and cos, sin and cos, 
So let's see if I can remember this. I've typed it so many times before. Vector two velocity equals new vector two and in it we can pass our values so the first one is going to be like our x so speed times uh, math uh, f dot cos Yeah, and then math f sin. Oh, come on, speed, and then so that's your vel. Uh, I could have me cousin sin mixed up. Only one way to find out. No, so yeah. I guess that was the one we've misspelled. So project settings input and oh we called it throttle. So always rename it. Remember that then? Input access acceleration is not set up. Make sure you've named it correctly in Input Manager. And there we go. We hold the forward key down and we're now moving forward. And if I rotate upwards, we are still moving right. I'm surprised we're actually moving as well because I haven't even set a value for that. It's like 10. Yeah, uh, what is it? What is it? So we've got our speed, but we wanted also to say, well, it's based on our angle. It plus the times. I think it's times. Okay. And we could have other errors, literally, depending on whether it's in radians or degrees. All right, so uh, unity uh, move at an angle. Oh, look at uh, moving off at an angle. <laughs> unity. No, not what we wanted. An angle to a vector. So math sin. There we go. So our angle is like we said, radian. So sin for x. So sin. And we're saying. So let's just make this easier. Times by look, it's just in it, sin, and there's the angle that goes into it.
We're not moving by an angle. Rotation. Direction. Now, oh, I've got it all scripted somewhere. I couldn't look it up. Uh, so, Unity, move in direction facing. Alright, I'll do a make a 2D object move in the direction it's facing. So, where are you? Transform.up is the alternative method. You can also do add force. So we could do add force, but why would we? Use transform.right rather than transform forward. 2D object moves on the XY plane. For a 2D object, transform will be into the screen and therefore not have any meaning. So transform.position, transform. Okay, always good to write code so we can get rid of that. That's simple. And then, are we actually even looking at the right thing? Yeah, transform. So I've got move position, move it. I don't know if that says five. I'll just check that we understand what this is actually doing. Zero by five. So I'm literally always moving to the right. Oh, so what happens when you code in Visual Studio and then you go back to Unity, you try and build and run everything. So move position, literally move to that pixel position. Stupid. So, not position plus equals, and then our answer is transform up times delta time times speed dot up times time dot delta time times by our speed what tell me that speed needs to be another flipping Because it's a vector three uh, rigid body two D dot transform dot up, and now you're going to tell me it's still a vector three. So that's a lot of rubbish. Translate. Body 
2D translate unity. So I got move, position. Let's just have a look at all the methods associated. Got position. So add, 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 move position, move rotation. So we could do add force, physics, it's really simple physics, add force, and then we say speed, which is now a force, and then we say our force mode. Add a force or add an instant force. Say so add an instant force. Really so annoying. Why? Hi. I guess this is why I stopped programming in Unity. <laughs> Transform dot translate. We've got to rotate. And so it's not using rigid bodies. Do we want to use rigid bodies? Yeah, we do want to use rigid bodies. Ugh. So we need to convert our two D dot position. times it by the speed and then we do it and I'm going to rename this because it's way too close to something else and it's probably just going to fly off in one direction in the wrong direction on oh, we keep doing that stupid beep to you do my friend But we can get rid of that times acceleration times time dot delta <laughs> oh, maybe we should just make me own game engine. Nothing happening there. Uh, debug dot right. Uh, console. Debug. Uh, 
So yeah, I've forgotten even how to spit out text. Debug.log log Just make sure its acceleration is representing something yeah it says maybe it's literally just mass maximum speed whatever max speed Is a high enough value to actually make the object move. Which currently doesn't seem to be the case. So uh, shouldn't it really be a rotation? Yeah. Ah. Totally add force vector force vector two vector two zero one hundred So dot set oh. Oh, wait only if you've declared a vector Daniel. So that'll just fly off in a hundred. What force? <laughs> like about one. Notice how it's getting faster. So impulse is not the one. Where that is. Oh, it looks 
looks like that. Yeah, that's gradually speeding up anyway. Oh, let's get rid of rigid bodies for now. So transform dot rotation rotate around let's say it's Back to free, uh, transform that up. Forty. What do you do? Woo! So up is why. To right. Should be Z. No. Go forward. And therefore, could only be that. There you go. And that looked pretty. Uh, times time dot. F whoops. But delta. So now that should rotate at exactly 40 frames a second rather than 40 whatever time steps updates. 40 every update. Whoops. Helps if you put that in the right place. Not on the transform, but literally, uh, which. Uh, how many units were rotating? So there you go. So then fixing this up. If rot not equal zero, then boom rotation speed and probably minus rotation speed as well yeah because a plus meant going the other way oh now we're just yeah uh like times by acceleration because we're saying rotate if put something down going left or right it's probably need reversing as well Whoops, acceleration, of course, rot. Okay. <laughs> Never get an idea that's like a bad idea to do certain things after you start doing it. <laughs> All right, so now we've got our rotation exactly the same before, but not using a rigid body. I'll have to remind myself on rigid bodies. Is the very reason why I stopped using the other project. So if acceleration and uh, well, yeah, not equal to zero, then transform dot translate. And then it's 
So we're not doing that. Not doing that. Put along the z axis. I don't think the z axis is always going to be where it's rotation uh, times the acceleration times time dot delta time. So we've got that gravity in there. Uh, just to keep it consistent. What have we gone wrong? If acceleration is not equal to zero. I should just get rid of that and then say, well, if that's one, and we should see movement. So it is moving on the Z axis, but of course the Z axis is not what we want, probably wants yeah. The X axis So the reason why it weren't moving is because it was probably trying to like come towards the screen, but given that it's the camera set to auger graphic mode, there we go, and we can also see that it sticks on that. So, to complete the code, which we should have done 10 years ago. So, acceleration uh, times by time, uh, speed times by time dot delta time. And if acceleration is not equal to zero, so literally we just say the pointless calculations happening when the key is not pressed and acceleration is back to zero. Why, why do you complain speed? Okay, yeah. Using a variable that is not defined. So who knows, perhaps my code would have worked before. I was using an undeclared variable and forgetting about it. speed five <laughs> uh, fifty there we go So nice move and let go, it stops, and we could also reverse as well. So it's also got a bit of speeding up and turning by the looks of it. All the gravity. Oh, that's basic movements. Yeah, very simple. <laughs> Super simple stuff. Really, really basic stuff. So that's our basic, 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 basics. Just give it the speed for now. I'm sure we'll use it later. So to reiterate, we've created two variables that are public and therefore accessible to our expector where we can define some values. We have set up in Unity in the input manager our rotation and throttle values, and in our code we access them through get axes. We then change the transform of the rotate and the translate, and no. 
rigid body has absolutely nothing to do with this now. Remove components. And there we go. So it doesn't move like a spaceship. It actually feels like it does move like a tank more than anything. But hey. Simple stuff. <laughs> Alright. Oh. I think I'll leave that there for now. And I'll have a look at using forces, getting movement. Do you, and yeah, I'll apply it on the rigid body that we just removed. Oh, excuse me. But yeah, uh, we'll leave that there. It's a good point to stop it. All right, thanks for watching. Hope. Hope it was some use to you. It was my first attempt at live streaming game dev. Uh, but until next time, Santorium or Pixane, bye for now.